All right, everybody. Here we go. It's time for the show. Because it's Friday. We got jokes. We got so much. We got good stuff to talk about. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Let's do it. Three, two, one. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Today is Friday, March 6th, 2020. My name is Jeremy, and this is my first cup of coffee. I wonder if I should keep saying that. Is it cheesy? Yes. But I think it's the good kind of cheesy. Like pizza. Pizza's the good kind of cheesy. Cheese is pretty good. I had pizza last night for dinner. Oh, man. <sighs> well, what was yesterday? Yesterday was full of clients. I was with one client for five hours. Yeah. And in between was doing a lot of emails, a lot of whistle kick stuff going on in between and in the background and I think one of the big things I'm thinking of right now, I had a call, there's a, a, a short-term lender we've worked with in the past. Now, honestly, most of these companies are, mm, I don't want to call them shady, but most of them are shady. But we've worked with one in the past and they reached out and they said, hey, you want to do something again? And I'm looking at it. And I'm looking at sales numbers that are the best they've been in nine months. And it's a combination of the products that we're reselling from, honestly, from other vendors and our own. And that's working. And I want to continue that, but I also want to get out of debt. So I don't know. I don't know which one we're going to do. Uh, I spent some time modeling different numbers, you know, taking a look at what, what things would happen with and without this money. And there's no clear answer yet. So I'm going to have to do some more contemplation. And uh, in the end, probably just going to trust my gut which I don't know what my gut says yet. My gut's telling me two very, very strong opposing things. And I have to decide which one's more accurate. So, yeah. Um, what else was yesterday? Not much. Clients. What was it? So today, today's Friday. <laughs> Stacy says, feed your gut good food, treat it well. So today, uh, I'll be headed out to my, my remote office, do a little more work for that client that hosts me there, and then I've got, I've got phone calls, I got a bunch of stuff going on. So I'm gonna get there as early as I can, and it's probably gonna be a late day. Uh, I, I will be surprised if I leave there before five. And uh, probably going to head to Costco after. Half because I'm interested in what's going on there right now with, uh, with everybody freaking out. I kind of want to go see the chaos. So we'll see how that goes. And then this weekend, um, there's a seminar tomorrow that I may go to. Uh, James Keenan, who was on the show, great guest, is going to be a couple hours away, and I'm contemplating going to that. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if I do. I don't know. Figure it out. Sunday. No, just hanging out, friends, house, cleaning, prepping meals. <laughs> Nothing particularly spectacular 
going on. But I need that. I'm looking forward to sleeping in tomorrow or on Sunday. I think it, it might be two days. It might be an entire weekend without an alarm clock, which would be remarkable. I haven't had a day like that in a while. So. Well, let's see what we got here. I know we got some questions and some comments coming in from some people. And remember, if you want to ask or, or say, drop it below. And it's much more fun for me and everybody else when we get people chiming in. Stay, uh, we're, let's do the joke first. So Frank drops us a joke. Today, Friday, March... Oh, no, there it is. There's the joke. It's a joke for fun day, Friday. Can February, March? No, but April, May. Oh, Frank. That was a good one. All right. Um, let's see, which one do we want to do first? Mm, there we go. Let's do this first. All right, so Stacy writes in, given the flu, cold, coronavirus season, what do you think about bowing to award medals and trophies versus shaking hands at tournaments? I have actually seen fewer people shaking hands at tournaments as time has gone on. Uh, there's a lot more fist bumping going on, which I think is, is for the same idea. Uh, I prefer to do it if I'm refereeing. I don't like shaking hands with that many people who are watered around, sweaty, touching each other. Excuse me. Oh. Um. Yeah. Just because something is generally a tradition doesn't mean it can't be changed. Just because we have long associated shaking hands with being respectful in this country and in most Western countries does not mean that we can't change that. It doesn't have to be because of the flu. It doesn't have to be because of coronavirus. It can be because you can get sick at any time. I don't think there's anything wrong with bowing. I don't think there's anything wrong with not shaking hands. I think that given that the protocol in this country tends to be bow and then shake hands, bow and then something. If you don't want to touch, bow and then, you know, finger gun, uh, fist bump. What else could you do? I don't know, I, I just, I think, I think you gotta add something because the bow, because people are used to two elements of respect in that circumstance. So, yeah, and I don't think you need to explain yourself. I think people get it. Small children aren't gonna care. Adults should understand. Might there be some person who thinks it's disrespectful? Yeah, but that's their problem. It's not like you're not bowing. It's not like you're withholding an overall uh, expression of respect. So, yeah. As far as I'm concerned, don't shake hands. Don't shake hands with anybody, ever. I'm just kidding. That's not right. That's not true. All right. We got a couple more. Today... Friday, March 6th, is actor Martin Cove's 74th birthday. Martin Cove played John Kreese, who was the Cobra Kai Dojo Sensei in The Karate Kid and has come back for Cobra Kai. And we've got some quotes. Certainly in the movie business, there are bullies all over. Bullies in the distribution business, exhibition business, production. Fine-tuning adult bullying is different. When a bully is an adult... It's a whole different set of colors, Martin Cove. We've talked about adults as bullies. We've talked about the fact that an adult bully was a 
youth bully who didn't get checked, who didn't get shown, whether it be physically or not, that this was the wrong way to feel better about themselves. We know that childhood bullies tend to come from adult bullies. It's a cycle, like most things in human behavior. If you raise someone to be disrespectful, they will probably have disrespectful children. If you raise someone to be a bully, they will probably have bully children. If you take a look at your kid and there's something about them you don't like, there's a very good chance it's part of your personality. Not always, but a good chance. Now, I can't speak to bullies in the film industry, but I can speak to bullies in the martial arts industry. I can speak to bullies in the martial arts product industry. They exist. I won't say any more because I don't like to say bad things about people publicly. And I don't know how much more I can say without uh, people, I mean people, anybody who hears me say stuff like that, they guess and they write me and they're like, oh, are you talking about so-and-so or this company? I'm not gonna tell you. I'm very selective about who I will share those things with because It just doesn't feel like the right thing to do. If I'm gonna talk about things, I'm gonna talk about positive things. I'm gonna talk about what we're doing. I'm gonna talk about how we're moving forward, how I'm trying to work harder, how I'm trying to improve things, not who's trying to get in our way and, and how people are um, attempting to stifle what we're doing. That's on them, it's not on us. I think through the last few years, uh, as a result of the Me Too movement, we've come to learn a lot about the film industry and Hollywood, and, and I'm not speaking to any one um, issue or person, but I think we've come to learn that it's a lot, it's a lot less above board than we might have thought. That it almost reminds me of politics with the, the quid pro quo and people being gross. And I think it's what happens when you have power. When people rise to positions of power and have money, they will leverage that power and that money to maintain it and to get other things that they want. I think that that is a natural human instinct, and I think some people are better at managing that status than others. One more, last thing for the day. I wanna see, here's my goal. I want three of you to chime in for Monday. We do not train to be merciful here. Mercy is for the weak. Here, in the streets, in competition. A man confronts you, he is the enemy. An enemy deserves no mercy. John Kreese. Now, if I'm remembering right, that is the quote that Daniel and Mr. Miyagi hear the first time they go into the Cobra Kai Dojo in the original Karate Kid movie. And while that quote is overblown, there's an element of truth. How many times have you watched someone in competition be too nice in sparring? How many times in training have you watched someone, especially a newer student, hold back far more than they should because they're afraid of their own skill or their own strength. It happens. And it happens in life. It happens outside of training. It happens outside of competition. 
And while I don't condone the over-the-top antics of a Cobra Kai-style training through every joke or sarcasm, and, and that's a sarcastic element, you know, the way that was included there, because it is so over-the-top. There's an element of truth. And I think now, with the Cobra Kai series on YouTube, and hopefully you've all watched that because it's utterly amazing. I think we get the opportunity to see another side. We get to see that things are not always black and white. If you want to train for competition in any sport, there's a killer instinct you have to develop. Life doesn't give you the benefit of the doubt. Life is hard. Which is why when I see youth sports teams and the scores are grossly lopsided, you know, 47 to 4 at a kids basketball game, I know somebody's doing something right there. There are a lot of lessons coming out of that. Those lessons stick with you. I'm not saying you should be the next Johnny Lawrence. I'm not saying you should tear the sleeves off your uniform and be Sensei Crease. But sometimes we need to challenge the people that we're teaching. Sometimes we need to learn to be a little more aggressive. Sometimes we need to stop being afraid of being dominant. I don't know how else to say it. So I'll just leave it there. I think that's a good place to end the show. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great weekend. No homework for the weekend. Drop some questions, drop some comments, subscribe, turn on notifications. If you get a chance, check out yesterday's episode of Martial Arts Radio where Josh Blum and I reviewed, commentated on that fight scene. Check it out with the, the video on YouTube and listen to the audio and see what you think. Let us know, should we keep doing those or should we do something else? We need some feedback on this because it's fun for us, but we want to make sure it's fun for you. I'll see you back here on Monday. Have a fantastic weekend. Take care.